Good morning and uh, welcome to our Sunday worship live from the rectory. Lord, direct our thoughts and teach us to pray. Lift up our hearts to worship you in spirit and in truth through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now, let us pray the prayer for today. God our Saviour, look on this wounded world in pity and in power. Hold us fast to the promises of peace, won for us by your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. The grace of God has dawned upon the world with healing for all. Let us come to him in sorrow for our sins, seeking healing and salvation. We say together, most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbours as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive you and free you from your sins, heal and strengthen you by his spirit, and raise you to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Our first reading for today is from Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 6, beginning at verse 12. Therefore, do not let sin exercise dominion in your mortal bodies to make you obey their passions. No longer present your members to sin as instruments of wickedness, but present yourselves to God as those who have been brought from death to life and present your members to God as instruments of righteousness. For sin will have no dominion over you, since you are not under law but under grace. What then? Should we sin because we are not under law but under grace? By no means. Do you not know that if you present yourselves to anyone as obedient slaves, you are slaves of the one whom you obey? either of sin, which leads to death, or of obedience, which leads to righteousness. But thanks be to God that you, having once been slaves of sin, have become obedient from the heart to the form of teaching to which you were entrusted, and that you, having been set free from sin, have become slaves of righteousness. I am speaking in human terms because of your natural limitations. For just as you once presented your members as slaves to impurity and to greater and greater iniquity, so now you present your members as slaves to righteousness for sanctification. When you were slaves of sin, you were free in regard to righteousness. So what advantage did you then get from the things of which you are now ashamed? The end of those things is death. But now that you have been freed from sin and enslaved to God, the advantage you get is sanctification. The end is eternal life. For the wages of sin is death. But the free gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. This is the word of the Lord. 
Thanks be to God. The Gospel reading is from Matthew chapter 10, beginning at verse 40. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Whoever welcomes you welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes the one who sent me. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name of a prophet will receive a prophet's reward. And whoever welcomes a righteous person in the name of a righteous person will receive the reward of the righteousness. Whoever welcomes a prophet in the name and whoever gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones in the name of a disciple, truly I tell you, none of these will lose their reward. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Our reflection today is offered by Carol. Of our loving Lord, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Compared to last week's Gospel reading, this one is very short. And yet, in a few sentences, it says so much. But I want to concentrate on verse 42. And if anyone gives even a cup of cold water to one of these little ones because he is my disciple, I tell you the truth, he will not lose his reward. If we are to learn anything from our faith, I think it's important to remember that it is based on servant evangelism. Our Lord Jesus came to serve, and if we are to really get our relationship right with God, shouldn't we be doing likewise? Now I don't think Jesus is talking about just giving a cup of cold water. I think he is describing a sharing of ourselves. He is describing the practicalities of living a Christian life. A life full of relationships with God and with one another. He describes the humble act of giving a piece of ourselves, a sharing in practical, not abstract terms. It's showing God's love by our sharing and caring through the little things. And sometimes it's the most simplest of acts of kindness that has the most lasting effect. Now I know I've told this story before, but it still remains with me and quite personal. When I was first married, we were struggling to make ends meet. I had to buy a loaf of bread on my way back from work. The loaf was 28p, but I only had 27p. I was beside myself. I had no other money and I could not afford to buy bread. A lady from work gave me that penny. I was so grateful and felt so indebted to her. I had a degree of anxiety until I could pay her back the following week. To which she replied, you don't need to, it was only one pay. Pass the kindness on. Well, it was a few years later and I was, a queue in, I was in a queue at the supermarket where I lived and there was a young mum ahead of me paying for her shopping and she was 50p short. The shop assistant was asking her to put something back but there was milk formula, nappies and all sorts of things to make a simple meal, no extras and I could see that same anxiety that I had had all those years earlier. I stepped forward and gave her the 50p. She immediately panicked and said, but I don't know you, how can I repay you? To which I replied, just pass the kindness on. Whether she did or not, it's for God to know, not me. But I was blessed by God to have the opportunity to pass the kindness on and I thanked him all the way home. Acts of kindness are contagious 
and opportunities are all around us to show and to demonstrate God's love. As seen, these acts don't need to be complex. These acts don't have to be extraordinary. These acts can be normal, everyday events, as basic as preparing a meal for your family. But love has to be the key to our actions. Servant evangelism means showing the love of God for our own caring and loving actions towards others. But we must do it with God's love, not by our, not by our own, for it to really matter and to be true. And I learned this lesson too whilst living in Reading. While speaking with my spiritual director, Roy, I mentioned how my friend, who was not a Christian, was more Christian than me. She was always doing things for other people. I never seemed to be organised enough to do as much as she seemed to do for others. If I needed a hand, she was often there before I'd asked, busy organising me and maybe arranging childminding or other things if I had appointments. And she did the same for others too. I remember Roy saying, but is she doing this through God's love? There is a difference. I said I didn't understand, but he replied, you will, one day. And as time went on, I began to understand what he meant, because there was always a payback coming. I did this for you, I want you to do that for me. She would complain that many of her friends were never there for her at the precise moment she needed them. She got very angry and bitter. I often used to say to her, but only help these people if you can, if you want to, if you have time to, not because you want pay back. It is only in recent years that she says to me that she understood what I meant all those years ago. But no, she won't take Christ on as her saviour, and she is still falling into the same trap. Whether ordinary or unique, we always have opportunities to show the love of Christ through simple acts of kindness. Service is based on showing God's love through ourselves, not based on who we are, but through Jesus in us. His grace is our reward. Sometimes it is hard to reflect that, like, that love that he has for us. Sometimes we find it so difficult to smile, let alone serve. Sometimes what we do might seem quite inadequate, especially if we compare it with the sacrifice that Jesus made for us. Paul knew this when he wrote to the Romans. Put this in human terms, he said. You're weak in your natural self. And to the Philippians, he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. We can show God's love for us for us, for our service by us. We can show God's love for us, for our service to others, by accepting that Jesus served us first. The power of the life we live is by the love of God we receive. When it flows out by God working in our hearts, that love we give has lasting effects compared to when we live in our own strength. Amen. Let us declare our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. 
I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come to our prayers of intercession, but before I lead you in those, I just want to remind you that uh, next week we have our new curate, Jonathan Brennan, joining us, and his wife, Diane, I think they're going to send us a video next week um, just introducing themselves to us. We are really looking forward to welcoming, welcoming them into the life of the church and of course into the Garforth community. It will all be a bit odd for them at this time and so I do urge you to pray for them this week as much as you possibly can and of course through all of their time here. But we will be praying for them today so I just wanted to remind you of that before we start our prayers. So let us pray. Father God, you have given us your only son to be for us both a sacrifice for sin and an example of godly life. Give us the grace to thankfully receive this wonderful gift and to always strive to live life according to your will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, we pray for the church, both here in Garforth and throughout the world, as we seek to bring your light into the darkness of a world still gripped by the coronavirus pandemic and many other injustices and disasters. Guide us all in our ministries as we live each day. We pray particularly for the Church of England, and St Mary's here in Garforth, as we grapple with the changing context and the complexities of the lifting of restrictions and what that means for our life together. In all our deliberations, may you be our guide. In all our efforts, may you be the source. May we faithfully serve you and not ourselves. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Creator God, we pray for people in parts of the world where life is precarious, whether through disaster, poverty, disease, war, or the present pandemic. We earnestly await that time when there is peace on earth, goodwill between all people, and an end to all suffering. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray today for our friends, our families and our neighbours, that we and they may always welcome the newcomer, the stranger and all who are vulnerable. Help us always to follow Jesus' example of hospitality and generosity both giving and receiving with grace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Sovereign God, we pray for all those for whom the joy and anticipation of new directions in life has been dampened or lost because of the pandemic. We pray for all those students who've ended their studies without the usual celebrations in person those whose house move or new job have fallen through, those who haven't been able to celebrate fully with others the birth of a new child. We pray particularly for our new curate, Jonathan Brennan, and his wife, Diane, who will be joining us from next week. This is not the, tr the transition to full-time ministry that they would have hoped for, but we trust that, with your support, Lord, they will feel welcomed and at peace here in Garforth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we pray for all who suffer in body, mind or spirit and for those who care for them. We pray for those who are ill, for those who mourn, 
for those without faith, hope or love. In a moment of silence, we pray for those who are on our own hearts this day. As we remember those known to us, we hold before you all those who have no one to remember them by name, except for you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Faithful God, in the week that lies before us, may we reflect your love in our families, our church and our community, and in doing so, draw others to know you for themselves. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. And before our um, final prayer, sorry Paul's giving me a sign there that says that the coffee link for after the service is on the screen now. I think it's also in the comments on the Facebook. So there's your invitation to join us for coffee. Uh, reminder that as usual we have worship streamed live um, on Sundays at 10 and night prayer on Wednesdays at 8 o'clock. Phone-in service at 9am on Sunday and in fact we're trying a phone-in night prayer um, for we're trying a phone in night prayer this week at Thursday at 8 p.m. So we have another food bank collection a week tomorrow um, in the, the church car park, 2 till 3.30. Uh, but you can also always drop off, sorry, on the 6th of July, a week tomorrow, as I said. Um, you can drop off at the rectory any time before then if you would like to. Thank you for the last lot. We always get a, a good car full now, so it's wonderful to do that. We have virtual events as well as coffee after church today. We have afternoon tea and a prayer meeting this week. Details are on our Stay Connected, and so you can also access them um, on our website. And we also have a book group in the offing, I believe. So, probably the thing you're wondering about more than anything is about uh, reopening our building. Hopefully those who um, were regulars before lockdown should have seen a letter from me issued on Friday. Basically, uh, it gave a very long letter that explained various issues, but I'll give you uh, the synopsis here, which is that we will be opened for specified sessions for individual prayer from July with strict restrictions in place obviously as you would expect the social distancing to keep us all safe. We're aiming to start with two sessions per week and see how that goes. We will do Wednesday the 8th of July and Saturday the 11th of July between 10 and 12. There will only be a part of church open in order that we can manage the cleaning etc that follows from that. We will also be holding funerals in church from, uh, from July, from this week indeed, and those will continue to be restricted to close family, currently up to um, a maximum of 15. And one important thing I think I need to say is that please do not attend the funeral unless you've been in touch with the family and have been specifically invited. Any people that are gathering outside church or on the street or wherever it may be must remember that they must stay physically distanced. That really is very important. In honouring the dead, we don't want to cause illness to the living. We are awaiting detailed guidance with regard to public worship. 
but I have to say that as it stands at the moment we don't expect to open again for public worship for some time uh, and really because of the challenges of the size of our congregation and the actual number that we can fit in with a church that is fully laid out with pews and, and the requirements of social distancing but we are working to look at that and to work through how we might be able to do it in a way that ensures that anybody who wants to come to worship is able to do so. And so I just a reminder to join us for coffee after church. Everybody is welcome. You don't have to have been a member of church beforehand. Anyone is welcome to join us for coffee. And so our closing prayers. To a troubled world, peace from Christ. To a searching world, love from Christ. To a waiting world, hope from Christ. May God who gives patience and encouragement give you a spirit of unity to live in harmony as you follow Jesus Christ so that with one voice you may glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in the light and peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen.